Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast today, Jake Clark and John Schneider. It's the Instructables version, uh, or Instructables uh, podcast, I guess you'd call it. We're going to talk about three different Instructables.com um, instructable things, instruction projects. Projects. There you go. Yeah. Projects. Um, the first one's kind of cool. Then the second two are kind of scary. <laughs> um, a little scary, dangerous. Scary is in yeah, definitely dangerous side of scary. Not yeah, scary yeah, yeah. is in you know scary movie scary. Yeah, it's not like Halloween scary. Yeah. Um, so the first one is actually um, custom custom iron on artwork using a three D printer. So Eric. Um, actually what, what the instructable is for is you actually 3d print it's supposed to be a layer thick. This is actually three layers thick. Um, but you actually print out, a uh, you want to hold those up, yeah. um, print out a, I don't even know what you want to call that a little face thing and, uh, or whatever you want. And then so it, iron it on. Yeah. And the way that it works is it takes vector graphics. So you can take a drawing, create vector graphics from it, and then you really extrude it to be like, uh, so you take that 2D drawing, extrude it up to be about 0.2 millimeters thick. So on most 3D printers, that's one layer thick. And then you 3D print it out, take it off your build plate. Um, you're supposed to use some sort of transfer paper, kind of like uh, like baking paper, I mm -hmm. think is a good example. And then you take it from that and then iron it on to the, uh, iron it onto the shirt or onto the fabric. I think in the Instructables case, it was actually a, uh, it was a messenger bag that they transferred it to. Yeah, where it, on the sleeve, it doesn't really, I mean, it, it's going to come off. So and I don't know how it would hold up to like washing it, but. And that's one of the things they bring up in the Instructable is you really need to wash it cold. So if you do any high temp stuff with PLA, PLA is going to melt pretty, uh, pretty easily. But even if you're washing it in cold or warm water, it's, I, yeah, I don't know how well it's going to dig into the fabric. And it's going to come down to the type of fabric, too. I think canvas would probably work better, something that doesn't stretch too much. Because if you have something that stretches, you're going to be able to stretch the fabric around it. So then it's not going to stick in the fabric as well. Yeah, this is going to fall off. Yeah. But and granted, this was a very quick and dirty way of doing it. There, If we would have followed the, uh, the instructions and, a little bit and, better. and gone out and done each step the way it described, it would probably stick a little bit better. But for getting something put together in about half an hour, um, from finding the instructable, printing it out, ironing it on, not too bad. Yeah, so it'll be interesting um, to see if uh, when we do this a little bit in a different way, maybe try Ninja Flex, try a couple different other materials, and see what what we find out. Find out. So we might try that um, in the upcoming podcast. Maybe we'll have an update to whether or not um, we got something to work a little bit better. So yeah, you did get it to stick to the paper, though. Yeah, so, was it, yeah, and it, it was the same same image for both, right, Eric? That's a wrapped, actually. Also, oh, that's yeah. the wrapped. Oh, okay. The wrapped the same thing. Okay, I got you. So it, is, it does work, and like Jake mentioned, we're actually going to experiment with 3D printing Ninja Flex directly onto fabric. No idea how that's going to turn out. Could turn out great. Could turn out with Poorly. some burnt burnt fabric but building should, could burn down but yeah so maybe next podcast we'll have the answer to that and maybe an instructable of our own on how we could go about doing that maybe yeah, yeah we'll see what happens so um 3d printing pens they've been out there there's a couple of them out there well there's a handful of instructable ones online and um they're kind of scary the, now we're gonna get into the kind of the, the the scary side of of these projects where they are sketchy i guess so this one 3D printing pen, you have to 3D print the enclosure to house a, the extruder around it. It doesn't have a motor to it. And it just, it looks like literally two, a, a person took an extruder off a, off a 3D printer, slapped it in some 3D printed parts, wrapped it up with electrical tape, and said, there, I got it. I made it for $60. Yeah, technically, <laughs> you know, $60 is what you made it for, but... I mean that's a that's a your burn. medical bills are gonna that's be... a burn waiting to happen oh. and it, it I mean they they even show on some of the pictures the three D printed housing is melted because of the heat from the extruder it's I mean the companies that have have made three D printed or three D printing pens and yeah we know they're not technically three D printing it's just a really precise it's a like hot glue gun but the ones that have made it for a hundred dollars and it actually works. It's kind of a feat to be able to do that because when you look at when someone tries to do this on their own, I mean, this is it's da it, it's gonna cause some burns. And yeah, some... it's it's definitely something that you don't just hand to your kid and say, okay, here, you know, make something. Yeah, make, make something, something with cool. this. Yeah, no, and I think it's funny because um, it says, don't forget to vote for this project in the three D printer contest. I'm just like, 
Uh, I don't think I would vote for this at all just because it's a little too dangerous. Well, and I neat. Mean, it's neat that there's people hacking it yeah. and doing that kind of thing. But for um, a usable product, it's kind of like... Uh, and I don't think that they're intending this to be operated by a child whatsoever. I think this is, hey, here's something to do on an afternoon. Make your own understand you know, to help you understand how it works why it works that kind of stuff yeah so it's it's a niche i guess i guess if uh, you want to go down that path it's a kind of a neat neat thing to do um me personally i'd rather go buy one but i would never buy a 3d printed pen because i have 3d printers and they're a lot better so but that's my opinion um they have their own own purpose so the next thing is not a 3d printed pen it's actually an anodized aluminum nozzle um which it kind of looks like a weird syringe <laughs> um, yeah. with a heat sink in, in the middle of it. And so what they did here is they're actually designing a nozzle. So the guy uh, milled it out. He did everything. I mean, the machining looks great from the, from the pictures that he has. Um, but as you go down the instructable, all of a sudden you see him dipping it in something. And you're like, what, what, what are you dipping that thing into? And he's doing a cus uh, homebrew anodizing um which i don't recommend this from from the instructable uh one of the one of the steps is now we use two teaspoons of sodium hydroxide in a glass to remove any oxidize like okay well that doesn't sound too great then a couple lines down it says uh um the anodizing takes place in a small container with diluted battery acid so if that doesn't sound like a missing finger or um going blind not i don't a, know what not does a missing finger just a melted one just well, you might go blind if that get in your eye. And just, oh, yeah. No, I mean, battery acid, no, you don't want to be screwing no. around with that. <laughs> so it's it's interesting and neat. The, the guy actually has it working. Um, he put it on a 3D printer. Um, it looks like he's been getting some really great prints from it. Um, so, I mean, the, the idea behind it um, is kind of interesting. And the final product he has is, is really interesting. Um, but the method he got to yeah. get in there is very very strange and dangerous yeah you just need a big disclaimer on it i mean it's uh i think he does actually in here well that's um, good i mean i think that all the people that do these uh the sketchier pro you know projects they know they know what they're doing is not osha approved at all no but it's, it's not classroom but, I mean, safe it, but no it's cool that they're that they're taking this and they're going out doing their own projects figuring out okay well based on what i have here's how i'm able to make this thing and they're able to make it work i mean like you said he's getting actual prints coming out through it seems to be printing decently well and yeah. I mean, more power to him but it's not something i'm going to be attempting <laughs> big big fan of not having that yeah. battery acid hazard even a possibility yeah no no thank you for that for that one um oh what was i gonna say um shoot i forgot now battery acid um, no, no, it wasn't that. It had to do something, something else. But um, I can't remember. Oh well. No, not that. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know either. But uh, oh, um, actually, one of the things I'd I'd be kind of interested in in knowing if there's a such such analytic is how many of these instructable people have missing fingers or limbs <laughs> because yeah. it looks like this guy's missing a finger in this video he could just be having his finger you know bent while he's trying to trying to grip something but i'm just curious on how many people have lost <laughs> lost fingers or have been hurt making these yeah it's just no oh, thank you i'll just I'll i think the 3d printing. printing one it's more okay how many times have you burnt yourself but oh yeah i mean yeah, burnt but, well, many and, times. and the great thing about instructables yeah, it's yeah. definitely not just 3d printing it's it pretty much anything that you could make there's, you know, someone has an Instructable for it. Um, a lot of really cool projects. So if you haven't checked out Instructables.com before, definitely do it. They have, uh, you know, you have both the website. They also have a mobile app for iOS and Android. I don't know if they do for Windows Phone, but then again, it's Windows Phone. So speaking, I don't think anyone's really outdoors. too worried about that. But they got, So I guess they have like food. Um, okay, the first one doesn't look interesting at all. But I mean, they have, like you said, they have a lot of interesting stuff. Um, if you haven't checked it out, um, go check it out. It has, you know, you might might start in the 3D printing realm, but you might end up somewhere else where uh, the food section or the outdoors technology, you might end up somewhere else. So it's kind of interesting. I haven't made any projects from there um, myself, but, oh, wow, rainbow marshmallow. Ooh, that looks good. Might have to try that one. Um, so definitely go check it out. It's an interesting website, and they got a lot of, a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, so this was 
pretty short podcast from from us this week. Uh, we've been keeping pretty busy, so we're, we have a lot of cool stuff that we can't wait to tell you about. We just can't tell you about it yet. <laughs> so if you haven't already, to make sure you find out about that cool stuff when we're able to talk about it, subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on iTunes. We're on a bunch of different social media networks. Just do a search for Fargo 3D Printing. Odds are pretty good that we're there. Uh, so on behalf of myself, John Schneider, and Jake Clark, thanks again for watching, and we hope to see you next week. Bye. The anodizing takes place in a small container with diluted battery acid. <laughs> nice. It's like there's a lot of this stuff. It's not. It's just scary. It's like not safe it's at cool all. The guy made his own extruder, <laughs> but. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I looked in like one of the videos. He might not have a finger, so.